Welcome to SVG TV News for Tuesday, September 20th, 2016. I'm Lafren Fraser with the details. The Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court held its ceremonial special sitting on the court earlier today, Tuesday, 20th September 2016, to commemorate the beginning of the 2016-2017 law term. Today's proceedings commenced with a church service at the Kingstown Methodist Church, followed by a procession to the courthouse in Kingstown. We hear more about the event in this report by SVG TV's Nikita Tony. Tuesday, September 20, 2016, marks the start of the 2016-2017 law year, which was observed with a special sitting of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court, ECSC, held simultaneously in all member states and territories of the OECS. The special sitting of the court was held under the team, the ESCS, the Movement Towards an Accessible Court. Prior to the sitting, there was a church service at the Kingston Methodist Church, which was then followed by a procession to the courthouse building. Once inside, members of the legal fraternity were told that the justice system is designed to serve the needs of the society by Justice Brian Cottle, who pointed out in his welcoming remark the need for persons to be more comfortable when seeking justice. Justice Cottle called on the members of the fraternity to embrace their roles and responsibilities in order for the objectives of the justice system to be achieved. The judges cannot do it alone. The bar has a crucial role to play. It is they who stand as the guardians, the guarantors of the rights of the citizens. It is they who will assist the citizens in bringing their matters before the courts. It is they who will assist the judges in ensuring that the dispensations which come from the bench are reflective of true justice. My sisters and myself, will be leaning heavily on the bar and we will be expecting the level of support and assistance to which we have become accustomed. Outlining that the ECSC, which will celebrate 50 years of existence in February 2017, continues to grow from strength to strength, Chief Justice of the Court Dame Janice Pereira highlighted the need for the judicial system to aim for the improvement and hopefully the attainment of equal access to justice, which is fundamentally observed in the rule of law. Equal justice and equal access to justice must not be allowed to become the purview of the rich or the powerful, for then it would not be considered justice, far less equal access to justice. The stride to achieve equal justice may be viewed as one of the highest ideals consistently pursued by any legal system grounded in the acknowledgement, respect, and observance of our basic human rights. Noting that there can be no adequate access to justice if persons are unable to utilize the judicial system, the Chief Justice called for there to be a more aggressive approach in ensuring both access to justice and equal justice. Attempts at judicial interference are on the rise. These attempts emanate from places and persons and by methods which you would least expect. The judiciary as an institution and through its judicial officers must remain resolute and focused in their mandate to ensure equal access to justice and equal justice. They must fiercely, unhesitatingly, and without fear or favor, guard and defend their role as protectors and enforcers of the rule of law, the guardians of our constitutions. That must remain our mission a mission which, in every respect, is one of the highest callings. Nikita Tony, reporting for SVG TV News. Questions as to why the Education Act of 2006 was only gazetted in March of 2015 were raised on a recent radio program. The issue was raised during a discussion on the Views and Issues radio program on Sunday, which looked at the Education Act as it relates to the education system. Former teacher and now lawyer Roderick Jones said that he was concerned it appeared that certain pieces of legislation were being enacted and given haste according to a political agenda. So yes, you do sometimes have cases 
places where um, you know different different bills are just hanging around um, for for different reasons. I, I imagine sometimes you know one has to be very wary of of different political agendas, and sometimes people are not inspired to ensure that the bill receives. Uh, the requisite proclamation that it's gazetted receives the assent and it becomes law. Uh, you find in cases where a particular party may have a, a particular direction that it wants to go and certain statutes are fast tracked, whereas others are basically left in the wilderness. Jones said that such haste in passing pieces of legislation over another can be seen as an indictment which must be carefully examined. He used the Cybercrime Act as an example of how the Education Act took years to enact, whereas the Cybercrime Act took only months. The Cybercrime mm -hmm. Act that is now very much a part of our uh, legal landscape in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and this is a piece of legislation that really has a very very brief history and one can't help but wonder what will cause a certain piece of legislation to be so fast struck that within a couple of months it becomes law and another is allowed to languish for such a, such a, such a long period. Something as important as education. So certainly it is an, in my humble opinion an, an indictment on our on the powers that be to allow such a critical piece of legislation to to, to languish for as long as it has been before it was um, enacted additionally school administrator and president of the st vincent teachers union oswald robinson is calling for a better system to be put in place to handle truancy robinson's plea was made on nbc radio's views and issues program where he said that only having one attendance officer for close to 70 primary schools and close to 30 secondary institutions is not feasible. Be in school, that they ought to be in school. Because I can't see why a child five, six, seven, eight years old locking around. It has to do with parental control and the systems must be in place to enforce. For example, I know now you have an attendance officer in the Ministry of Education. But that's one. So we need to strengthen the institutional capacity of the Ministry of Education and other agencies like the social welfare. One person alone can't cover how many schools we have, brother. 68 primary schools. 68 primary schools and how many secondary schools? 26 secondary schools. So we have to pay a lot of attention to strengthen the Ministry of Education. The teachers' union president further called for an improvement to the administrative building which houses education officials. The building that houses the Ministry of Education is something that we have to pay attention to, eh? because the morale of people who work there could be impacted in positively. So I am making a call to really... It is not directly linked to what we are discussing, but I am making a call that we need to house our ministry officials in a better building. Because education has been used by Simmons and the Grandians as the strategy to reduce poverty. And therefore that infrastructure is also important. Right? But as I said, we need the personnel, we need the programs, we need proper parenting programs, and we need to hold the parents accountable. 19 students of the St. Vincent and Grenadines Community College Division of Technical and Vocational Education received scholarships from the Mustique Charitable Foundation to cover 80% of their tuition, course fees, travel, and meal costs. Speaking at the awards ceremony was Osborne Bowens, Dean of the Division of Technical and Vocational Education, who called on the recipients to make the foundation proud of their investment. And at this point, I think the trust and the foundation, they are on to something in changing how we conceptualize and define what education ought to do for us in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. To the students who are the recipients of this award this morning, as I indicated, this is going to help your prospects for success. You have a few less things to think about, few less obstacles out of your way. Your next goalpost is successful graduation. Make it happen. Make the trust and the foundation proud of the investment that they have made in you this morning. And I'm sure that 
having done that, you would be better, families would be better, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines would be better for it. Thank you very much. Nigel Scott, director of the SVG Community College, also called on the recipients to work hard to develop both themselves and the country. It was, as Mr. Bowen said, quite a, a difficult selection process. I want to urge you to be wise in your work, be wise in the application of what you do, and to give of your best always. There are persons who have contributed to the foundation and have contributed significant amounts to the foundation and to the trust over the years, who would love to know that at the end of it all, their contributions made a significant difference in your lives. And so the best returns you can give is to work hard and give up your best and show that the education you receive here can in fact resound and redound to the benefit not only of you but of our country, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Roger Pritchard, the chairman of the Mustique Charitable Foundation, said the organization was formed to allow persons in the United States an opportunity to assist communities in SVG. Pritchard also expressed confidence that fields of study which the recipients have chosen are of critical importance to the development of SVG. Looking at the, at the sort of subjects that are covered, uh, whether it be um, architecture, agriculture, hospitality, electrical engineering, business studies, culinary arts, um, business studies, information technology and communications. These are all areas that are critical to the development of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So I think you know, the subjects that you've, you, that you've chosen are critical. Um, I hope that this scholarship program will support you in your efforts. So finally, I'd just like to once again congratulate you all personally uh, the, 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 the recipients of this award, but also I'd like to thank the staff of the community college and the technical college and the other divisions of the community college and all of the students who attend the community college to wish them all the very best with their future careers and may you have success and may that help the development of this beautiful country. So thank you very much and uh, good luck. In an effort to provide an avenue of empowerment, motivation and inspiration to students, the St. Vincent Grammar School will host its annual Old Boys Day tomorrow, Wednesday, September 21st, 2016, in the hope of promoting interaction between existing students and former students. In an interview with SVG TV News earlier today, principal of the school, Curtis King, noted that the event has proven to be very beneficial to present students as they are given the opportunity to interact, relate and most importantly learn from past students of the institution. We believe that by exposing our students to the collective wisdom of our past students, we would be in a position to motivate them to do great things. Two levels of activities. One is more formal, that is the, the, the short presentations which should be done by the past students at the school. And then we have uh, another level of interaction, which is more social at the playing field. The, the current students warm to the idea. And secondly, the past students themselves, they were able to share a great deal with, with, with these students so that there was, if you like, mutual benefits for both the past students as well as the current crop of students. Stressing the need for there to be greater collaboration between the major stakeholders of education, King noted that since the reintroduction of the event last year, the willingness of the past students signal that the event will only get better. The St. Vincent Grammar School had some female students to around 1969 right up to 1995. So we are indeed inviting all of our past students who have the capacity to make it between the hours of 10.30 a.m. and 3 p.m. 8.30 a.m. to around 9.45 a.m. We will be having a special church service at the Kingston Methodist Church. One of our objectives behind having this activity is that we would have at the end of it all the formation of a, a very vibrant and, and, and effective Alumni Association. We are also hoping that the funding 
would provide us with some resources to help us to send a team of athletes from the school to the pen relays in April of 2017. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it is absolutely important that our illustrious past students, wherever they are, they turn out and participate. Highlighting some of the activities which will follow tomorrow's event, Chairperson of the Organizing Committee and Teacher at the St. Vincent Grammar School, Ayanna Baisden, urged the general public to support the event as it affords them the opportunity to interact and be involved with the younger generation. Friday we have the football finals. Um, it will be sponsored by Franklin Brown Associates and that should be quite exciting. Right now we have the semi-finals and the quarter-finals going on. On Saturday we have All Boys Day. It's going to be a fun day and it will take place at the Arnesvale playing field from 1 until 6. Barbecue, drinks on sale, um, fun races like the sack race. We'll have tug of war, some relays with the past and present students, small, bo small goal football and cricket want to see the different age ranges come out and play against each other. It's a different interaction between the boys of the different years and we expect that it will be a day when we can join together as a school, past, present and future. All girls are expected to come out and bring their husbands and our all boys are expected to bring their wives and children. In more local news, with an aim to empower the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, psychologist at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital, Dr. Joselle Miller, has opened the very first virtual psychological center in the country. According to Dr. Miller, while the wellness center, dubbed the Valio Experience, primarily focuses on psychological wellness, it provides a range of other services. Being a health psychologist, I am very concerned about person's overall wellness. I think um, for a long time we have been more concerned about the curative aspect of health, that persons look in terms of what we can do to get better as opposed to what can we do to stay, you know, stay well and to be well. So my inspiration was pretty much to get persons to understand that it is better to be proactive than curative. Miller notes that the center is not just for persons who are mentally challenged. Critical thing. I think we are at a stage now where we have to understand that we can't, you know, be thinking in a reactive manner anymore. It's about being proactive. It's about understanding that when we think of psychology or even psychiatry, it's not that we are only thinking that everybody's mad or we have this stigma attached to the whole idea that, you know, if you come and speak to someone about your problems, then you must be crazy that something is wrong with you. But we have to get persons to understand that we all have issues at different points. We all have things that we will feel overwhelmed by or challenged with. And when you have someone that you can actually share you know, your story with, you can even encourage them you know, when they are going through their bout of the same issue. She says at the center they take confidentiality very seriously so persons should not be fearful to come to them. We realize that we are a small country and as they say everyone knows everyone so you figure that once you start talking about your story that persons obviously are going to go on the street with it. But there comes a point in time when you have to trust. You have to trust someone and let them in. At the value, we take confidentiality very seriously. We believe that, you know, your story is your story and if you want to share it, you know, with anyone else or make it public, then you have to do that on your own. For us, we are, ca uh, we are concerned about, you know, helping you and meeting you at the point of your need and it's not a public issue. The Ministry of Tourism, Sports and Culture has joined forces with the Ministry of Education in an effort to improve on the skill of dance in schools throughout St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Dance officer in the Ministry of Culture, Maxine Brown, elaborated on the importance of incorporating dance in schools and its benefits to the students. In my opinion, as the dance development officer within the Ministry of Tourism, Sports and Culture, I think dance is very important. What makes, makes dance so important? Dance makes the whole child. Dance builds, it builds confidence, it develops fine motor skills, it makes learning and teaching fun and exciting. As a matter of fact, studies have proven that through dance and arts on the whole, children do better academically. 
I did my studies in that in the US for my master's studies and it has been proven that indeed children do better if they're involved in the arts and in this case dance. We want to make learning fun so we want to integrate dance and the arts on a whole in education and through that we want to make learning fun and exciting and that's important. We want to bring the classroom alive and that's why we go to the schools to incorporate dance through the Ministry of Culture. Noting that dance develops a child holistically, Brown advised parents to view the art as a valuable feature in a child's development as it has helped past students to excel in academics. I admonish parents to get your students involved. As a dance development officer, sometimes I have issues when the students get to grade 6, CPA. They take them from dance and studies have proven that through dance and the arts on a whole, you become better holistically. And as we say, we embrace the whole child. But when they get to grade six, I find that the parents take the children from dancing, thinking that they'll do better. And I've proven that those who stayed on in dancing, because you need a break sometimes. Last year, a student who was very involved in dance came first for CPA. And she never stopped dancing. She continued throughout the process. You need a break sometimes. Parents, please give the children a chance. This year, two other students who have been exposed to came first for, for common insurance, Emma Rouse and Danielle Wright. So those students, those students who continue to dance throughout the grade six class, they really excel. Parents, dancing does not hold students back. Give them a chance, we need to embrace the whole child and develop them holistically. Members of the public, particularly the youth, will be given the opportunity to improve their relationship with Christ as the Kingstown and Chateaubelair Methodist Youth Commission hosts a youth rally on Saturday, September 24th at the Spring Village Methodist Church. Committee member Christopher Findlay said the rally, which will be held under the theme Pressing Toward the Goal, will assist in keeping the youth focused on their relationship with Jesus Christ. Well, basically, the rally is, is, is actually a thing that will, um, let's say, bring out different, different aspects of one's, like, one's walk with Christ. Um, you know, well, the youth, youths know these, know these days, right? They basically are bombarded with many different distractions. It really is one of the things that we do to keep um, youth interested and keep them pressing on pressing on towards the walk with Christ. Also speaking with our news team was coordinator Emil Aaron Kadagan, who promised spirit-filled sessions and encouraged the general public to attend the upcoming event. So far, we have the option between two persons, vibrant, interesting, um, spirit-filled ministers, which would be Bishop Ferdinand or Reverend Derek Richards, both of whom will be very interesting and very enlightening present a very enlightening argument and discussion to the youth ministry, illustrating to young persons the things that they can do to develop a closer relationship with God, and of course, giving them very important tips for lifelong lessons. Most we want the general public to know when is the rally, which is on Saturday the 24th of September, and it will be taking place at the Spring Village Methodist Church from 2.30 p.m. And we just want the general public to come out and to enjoy, to worship and to fellowship with our young people and to know that there are still young persons out there who actually have a love for God and want to see a difference in our country. Dagan also highlighted some of the innovative activities his church's ministry has undertaken in an effort to keep the youth focused on Christ. Um, additionally, one of the things that we're doing differently this year as well is that we have a various amount of ministries that we are launching, particularly for the young people. We have the dance ministry that we started already, which is, from the fir which is every first and third Saturday of the month. We have our circuit band that we launched re recently, Heart Worship. We are also starting the drama ministry and a number of different things. So this is also an opportunity for us to bring those ideas as well to all the young people who are interested in being a part of these different ministries that we will be having in the Methodist Church.